Amen. Well, good morning. It is good to see you this morning on this wonderful winter day. We're glad that you're here. You should have received a bulletin when you came in. Inside that bulletin is upcoming events and activities you'll want to be aware of and keep up with. A couple things I do want to draw your attention to that aren't in there. Um, if, if you missed out, you missed out on a great time when we had our Hanging of the Green service. It was a wonderful service. But uh, part of that was we passed out family advent guides. And so if you weren't here and didn't get one of those on your way out this morning, I'd encourage you to grab one of those. It's got daily readings for your family and uh, some, a lot of information about the month of December and everything that's going on. So you'll want to uh, grab one of those. And, uh, and then this afternoon is uh, our open house. This is a tradition that I started when I was a youth minister, and it has grown dramatically. But uh, we're looking forward, if you can make it this afternoon, to coming over to our home and just a time of fellowship. And uh, we'll start at about 4 o'clock and go till the food's gone, which could take a while. So uh, come and please come and help, uh, but come and fellowship with us. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to that time of, of sharing in uh, in one another's lives. Uh, at the end of the service this morning, Donna and the boys will be at the back doors and they'll have just a little invitation sheet that also has a map on the back to get you out to the house. So we'd love for you to come and join us. Let me open us with a word of prayer. Father God, as we come before you this morning, we are humbled to be in your presence. We have gathered together to honor and glorify you. This is all about you. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to keep our focus where it needs to be. You have blessed us so richly. You watch over and care for us. And this morning, you have us here for a specific reason. You have something you need to tell us. May your spirit be at work within us, drawing us into your presence, but also revealing to us what you hope to see happen in our own lives. Give us courage and boldness to act upon it this day. And we'll be sure to give you the glory, honor, and praise. As we do so now in lifting our voice in praise to you, be blessed, Lord, by the worship of your people. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing Joy to the World. Matthew 
<clears throat> chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's sing together.
The second candle of the Advent wreath is the angel's candle. The angel's candle announces that the babe of Bethlehem, whose birth the angels announced on Christmas Eve, will come again with all his angels to take us home and establish his everlasting kingdom. The revelation of St. John records what, they, what that day will be like in the 22nd chapter. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river. The tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And night shall be no more. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit of, and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Let him who is thirsty come. Let him who desires take the water of life without price. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. If you would bow with me in prayer. Fathers, we pause right now, Lord. And we celebrate the lighting of this second candle, the angel's candle. Lord, how I am just in awe that when you come and take us all home, Lord, how majestic that's going to be that you have your children there with you and we all sing praises to you, Lord. Lord, as the saying says, and we hear it all the time, Jesus is the reason for the season. May all of us as Christians, Lord, step up and be the representatives that we should be in the celebrating this time and the celebrating of your birth. Lord, just bless those who are here today, Lord. Open our ears that we may hear Brother Willie today as he brings your word to us and challenge us. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing again, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
together. Father, today we do come into your presence again, Father, to, to give our lives to you, Father. And as during this portion of our, of our worship time, Father, we come giving our tithes and offerings as a, as a gift back to you, Father, of what you blessed us with. We pray that these will be used to, to further your kingdom's work and glorify yourself. In Jesus' name, amen.
well done. I am looking forward to the 22nd when we get to hear them perform for us and share with us that evening. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. We'd like to think that God's thoughts and our thoughts were in sync, that God's ways and our ways were in sync. But that's just not reality most of the time. I've talked a great deal lately about expectations. Expectations of what God has planned for us here in Richmond. Expectations of the new relationships that I am building. Expectations of how God is going to use this church family to reach this community. Expectations are great things, and they're important. I'm sure you've heard the statement that if you aim for nothing, you're guaranteed to hit it every time. And that's not who we want to be. We need to have expectations for our lives and how God will use us. But what of the things that we're not expecting? You know, three weeks ago, as God had led me to a message that included a song, I was not expecting to come down with a cold. But that's life, isn't it? A lot of times, living life brings unexpected events and activities. I know that some of you, even this morning, are dealing with situations like that. You've had your plans. You've had your expectations. We're approaching Christmas. It's the holiday season. You had many things in mind, but life happens along the way. Things that are unexpected come along. I remember several years ago, one of the early signs of aging came my way. I do not like these things. I didn't grow up wearing glasses, never needed them. I prided myself on my peripheral vision, especially when I was out hunting. I could watch the woods without moving my head. Not so anymore. As I have aged, I didn't expect to have to wear glasses to read my Bible, to see signs driving down the road. Now, I wouldn't trade them for anything because if I didn't have them, we'd all be in trouble. But things happen. And oftentimes, these come as unexpected blessings. How, you wonder? How, how would you call them blessings? Well, as, as we uh, celebrate the Advent season, our focus is on the blessings of Christmas this year. But how can an illness or an undesirable situation be seen as a blessing? We have a hard time with that, don't we? When interruptions come our way, we've got a picture of what life should be, how things should be going. Probably this morning as you sit there, you've, you've got the rest of the month somewhat planned out. Where you're going or who's coming to see you, when the Christmas celebrations will be, who will be there, and how it'll all play out. You've got it pretty well set in your mind. You've been working at it for probably a few weeks on the phone with different relatives trying to put it all together. Now, you do realize that just because you've put it all together doesn't mean it's going to happen, right? But we've got to be ready. Because many times the things that we are not expecting is exactly what God needs to bring a blessing into our lives. So let's look at how God works with unexpected blessings. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter 1. 
It's the beginning of the story of the earthly life of Jesus. Let's look at this together. We're going to begin in verse 18. If you'll follow along as I read. Now the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, did not wanting, not wanting to disgrace her, plan to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father God, as we enter into your word this morning, may it truly prepare us for the life ahead. You brought us here this morning because each one of us is dealing with things in our own lives. And you have the answer. You want to reveal to us your plans, your intentions, the hope, the grace, and the mercy that you want to give as you increase our faith. May we truly hear from you. May your spirit work among us this day. And may we be found faithful in how we respond to your word. We ask it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're looking for unexpected blessings in this passage. So as we think about unexpected blessings in our own lives, let's talk about where we might find those. Number one, we may find unexpected blessings when our plans are interrupted. When our plans are interrupted. Think about this for a minute. Think about the situation Joseph was in. Joseph had planned to marry Mary. In fact, they were betrothed, which is a bit more complex than our engagements. They were, for all intensive purposes, married but we're waiting for the ceremony to finalize and move in together. The commitment was in place already. But before the ceremony could be held, Joseph was in his planning stages. Now realize in this day and age, the, the groom had a lot of work to do in a marriage and a ceremony and the activities thereof. We've kind of swapped that around today, haven't we? You brides, you have a good time with those wedding ceremonies. You enjoy those. I told Donna when we got married, I said, tell me when to be, where to be, I'll be there. Your ceremony. Uh, she planned it all out, beautiful, and did a wonderful job at it. But us men, we kind of just go along and do what we're told, right? Now, a lot of you ladies wish it would have stayed that way. But after all, we are men. So the commitment was in place for Joseph and Mary. But before the ceremony could be held, Mary's found to be with child. You think this might have put a kink in Joseph's plans? Put yourself in his shoes for a moment. How could this happen? They were committed to one another. She had told him 
that she would be his forever. How in the world could she do such a thing? Joseph had taken the proper steps. I'm sure he spent time in prayer about whether this was the one that God had intended for him. I'm sure he spent time with the in-laws. He got to know them, allowed her to get to know him. What happened? How in the world did this thing happen? This, this was not in his grand plan that Joseph had. You know, this isn't the first biblical story of life interruptions. Think about Abraham. Abraham had been living in Ur, doing well, found a wife, married her, his family was doing good, and suddenly the message comes, I need you to move. I need you to go to a land that you've never been to before, you know nothing about. I need you to move there and establish yourself there. Now, the people of that land, they're not going to like you. They're going to despise you. Yet I want you to go. You're going to struggle while you're there. You're going to share the land with your nephew Lot, and he's going to take some prime land, but he's going to get himself into trouble and get you into trouble along the way. But I want you to go. A life interruption. Right in the middle of everything going well, God came and said, Abraham, move. Oh, and by the way, just in case you were questioning, you and your wife will be barren for many, many years, but I will make a great nation out of you. Doesn't that sound like a great proposition? Doesn't that sound like exactly the plans that Abraham would have had for himself? Life doesn't always happen that way. But look at the result. Look at what happened as a result of Abram moving. Look at the nation that God established through him. And what about Joseph? Not, not Joseph and Mary, but Joseph, the son of Israel. He had had visions and dreams of being great and powerful one day. He just didn't realize the interruptions along the way. Being sold into slavery. Being thrown into prison. And then he finds himself second in all of Egypt. All he really wanted was for his brothers to like him. But interruptions came. See, in order to use us, God often interrupts our lives. Why? Well, because you know as well as I do, it's easy for us to get into routines, to get into ruts, doing the same thing day after day. I mean, let's think about it. Today may have been an unusual day. Had a little interruption thrown in. You woke up to snow. Yes, I will call it snow. There's not much of it, but it's there. You faced a choice. You're going to get out in it. You're going to go ahead and go to church. Now, on any other given Sunday, you wouldn't have thought about anything. You would have gotten up, gotten out of bed, gotten ready, and come to church. And many of you went ahead and did that this morning because it's your routine. But I wonder, before you walked into the sanctuary this morning, did you stop and wonder what God was going to say to you today? See, that's why we need interruptions. And that's why we find blessings in interruptions. Is because oftentimes we get into a rut and we go through the motions without even thinking about it. And God needs to get our attention. His desire is to interact with us. So we need to look for unexpected blessings when our plans are interrupted. But we also may find them when God does not answer immediately. Joseph had to make a decision. His 
wife, for all intensive purposes, is found to be with child. He had to make some decisions. After all, she was going to begin to show pretty soon. People would know she was pregnant. Some people probably already did. He had to figure out what to do. We're told that Joseph was a righteous man. That's what it says in this passage. He had very few options available to him by the law. A very public divorce was the norm, but Joseph was a bigger man than that. As he worked through the options in his mind, he thought of Mary and the baby. What would come of them if the news was announced to everyone? He decided for her sake to divorce her, but to do it quietly and privately. No one need know what was going on. Yes, this could cost him in reputation, but it would be worth it to protect Mary and the baby. He didn't have an intervention from God at the moment to tell him to do anything differently. So he made his plans. See, there are often times when God allows us to wander in the wilderness for a period just to see what we're made of. Think of the children of Israel when they left Egypt, when they got across the Red Sea. We had already seen a little bit of what they were made of. They'd already started complaining. But God allowed them to wander in the wilderness for a while. Why? Because he needed them to see what they were made of. He needed them to make a decision. God sometimes does that with us. Have you ever had a period of time where you ask God why? Now, that's not a question we usually get an answer to. Please understand that. But we ask it anyway, don't we? When a loved one passes away, we say, why? When we or someone we care about comes down with an illness, we say, why? And sometimes we don't hear that still small voice, even when we're listening very intently. Because God needs us to look inward a little bit. God will often take us out of our comfort zone before he answers our prayers. I don't like that any more than you do. But it happens because he needs to get our attention. Here we have Joseph and Mary's lives being interrupted. How wonderful and perfect in their eyes was this marriage going to be? and suddenly a baby is thrown in. While the prayers of hundreds of years are about to be answered for the whole nation of Israel in the midst of their interruption. God has plans, folks. And once in a while, it's difficult for us to see him. But I want, you, I want you to realize that, that God doesn't intend to keep things hidden from us for long if he hides them from us at all. There are times when he will wait to reveal his plans to us, probably because of things we're dealing with in our own lives, issues that we have to get figured out for ourselves. You know, it's true that we all have the need to hit bottom sometimes before we look back up. Our bottom may be a little deeper than others or a little shallower than some. But God needs our attention. And so sometimes we have to make plans as Joseph did. 
But the third area we find unexpected blessings in is when we demonstrate grace through obedience. When God respond to us. Joseph received a word from the Lord here. Now, as I say all this, you may have never stopped to think about the timing that took place when Mary was found to be pregnant. A lot of us like to think that at that moment, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Joseph, here's what's going on. Calm down. But that's not what it says. Do you think Joseph responded immediately with his idea to divorce her quietly? No, he had to think about it. He had to pray about it. And then he began to make his plans. And after he had made his plans, an angel of the Lord comes to him. Now, just because a word of the Lord comes to us doesn't mean that we're going to follow the direction given, does it? You ever been there? I have. God has plans. God says, here's what I need you to do. Well, let me think. Gideon, yeah, Gideon. I'll be Gideon. Lord, are you sure that's what you want me to do? Could you give me a sign? Could you help me clarify this? Now, he might. He might not. When God speaks, who listens? Sometimes we just need to listen. And though the Lord spoke to Moses, it didn't guarantee, or to Joseph, I'm sorry, to Joseph, it didn't guarantee that Joseph was going to respond to what God's direction was. But for the benefit of all, us all, Joseph did. This was even more difficult than the quiet divorce that he had planned. Now, he has to go ahead and marry Mary, who is having a baby that is not his. Now, in today's society, that doesn't seem so hard. But in the day when this happened, that was a big deal. He will have to answer all kinds of questions about his actions. And yet we know the rest of the story. Joseph is given grace to endure. God provides and walks along his side. See, God desires to demonstrate his grace in our lives through our obedience. We face choices every day. and especially when the unexpected situations come along. Will we choose to be obedient or will we rely on our own abilities to get us through? Go ahead and make the plans, but be ready to adjust them as you hear from God. Don't be too set in your ways that you miss the blessing God has waiting for you. His grace is able to keep us no matter where he takes us. I'll never forget a Sunday evening in the middle of the Rocky Mountains nine years ago. We were in an empty house, few beds, forced to sleep in. We had preached in view of a call of a little mountain church. And everything inside of Donna and I said, this, this can't work. I remember praying and crying and reading. And I remember the passage of Scripture from one of Donna's devotionals that evening. was of Jesus in the garden when he said, Father, 
let this cup pass from me. But if it, but if it is your will, I will do it. You know, sometimes doing what God asks is not the easy thing. But it's the right thing. And God will demonstrate His grace through our obedience. And no matter where God takes you, no matter what God asks you to do, His grace will be sufficient in your obedience. As a result of Joseph's actions, he, along with you and I, have experienced the most unexpected blessing of all, Jesus Christ. Not deserved, not earned, and truly not what was expected. A suffering Savior? No, we want a powerful Savior. A Savior who gives His life? No, we want Him to live and rule. That's why so many people missed Him. Because He wasn't what they expected. Jesus came and turned the world upside down with His teaching and His sacrifice. You know, you and I were living our lives along just fine when they were interrupted at some point in time. I remember when mine was interrupted. I was a student at the University of Tulsa. I was interrupted with the knowledge of who Jesus was. I knew he had something to do with Easter. Well, actually, I knew he had something to do with Christmas. Wasn't too sure about the Easter part. But came to understand who he was, what he did for me. Talk about a life interruption. I had my future all planned out. And at that point in time, doing this wasn't even in the remotest possibilities. But God had different plans. And my life was interrupted, just as yours was at some point in time, with the knowledge of who He is. We were obedient to change direction and accept Him as our Savior and Lord. As a result, we have become the children of God. Do you recognize the blessing that came and he has blessed us daily I wonder are you ready for more can you handle more prepare yourself prepare yourself for those unexpected blessings that are coming because they'll be veiled in unusual ways I don't know what each and every one of you is going through right now in your life. I don't know what difficult situations you may be facing. But God does. It may be an interruption to your life right now. Or it may be that you have been asking, but you just haven't heard back from God yet. Or it could be that you've heard you're just trying to decide whether to follow through or not. In any case, let me encourage you. God has blessings waiting for you. In the midst of what you're going through right now, God has blessings waiting for you. Are you ready for them? Your decisions, your choices, what will you do? I wouldn't trade a minute of my life because I have seen how God has worked through it. Oh, there was a time when I wondered, God, why did you allow me to go so long without knowing you? 
As a college student, I would go and, and speak at different youth groups at churches, and I'd do different youth events with different churches, and I, I, always, I always wondered, God, why didn't you allow me to be a part of that? That looks like it would have been so much fun. But God had different intentions for me. God needed to get a hold of me completely and totally, and he knew the best way. So trust him. Trust him this Christmas season when things may not go quite according to plan. Because through it, God may have some unexpected blessings for you. Let's pray together. Father God, right now, help us to stop in the busyness of the holiday season. Help us to take a step back and gain perspective. Lord, you have plans for us. You have intentions for us. But we also know that there are interruptions coming our way. That sometimes we need to wander in the wilderness just a little bit before we're ready to hear what you have to say to us. And Lord, we have plans. And it's hard sometimes to set our plans aside when you change them. But give us discernment. Give us courage to do that. Lord, I thank you for the day you got a hold of my life. You interrupted the plans I had and changed the direction. And I thank you that you have done that in so many lives here. But Lord, I know there's some here this morning that they haven't stopped for that interruption yet. Oh, they've heard about who Jesus is. They may understand that he died on the cross to pay for the sins of each one of us. But it's kind of like where we are in relation to Christmas right now. It's a, it's a gift, but it's not ours yet. There are some here this morning who have not received that gift yet. Lord, help them not to wait any longer. Help them to make this day the day of change. The day when you come in and give them new life and full life. And Lord, for others of us, the issues we're dealing with right now, we know that you will work them together for your glory. Help us to trust you. Help us to rely on you. Help us not to stop living because we may not understand. And help us not to stop pursuing you even when you make us wait. Strengthen us, Lord. We want your blessings to continue in our lives. So help us to be faithful. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here this morning and you have never received the gift, the ultimate gift that Jesus gave when he died on that cross for you, he paid the price for your sin. But it's a gift that you have to take and make your own. If you have never done that, today is the day that he wants you to receive it. Will you? Will you step out and come and allow us to share with you what Jesus has done for you and the life that he has for you? Maybe there's other decisions that God is asking you to take action with this morning. Pray that you would be faithful as Joseph was to do the right thing even now. Let's stand together as we sing this hymn of invitation, a chance for you to respond. The altar is open to come and pray. I'm here. Our deacons are here. You come as we sing out.